Hello folks, welcome to another Darktable Landscapes video. We're processing this shot from the Quirang in the Isle of Skye today. Uh, so let's get it going. Uh, it's obviously a pano uh, stitched in uh, an app that will not be named. So the first thing I'm going to do is crop out the, uh, the effects of the pano. So let's go for crop. And just drag in an appropriate amount. So we'll pull in these corners. That looks pretty good. And let's have a look at exposure. So exposure is fine as it is. And now sigmoid, our tone mapper. Let's just raise our black point for a little bit of fade. Let's go even one. Okay, so the first thing that's striking me here is that the greens are really kind of intense. This was taken uh technically during sunrise but that time of sunrise where you're just kind of thinking right the light's about to go now it's getting a bit boring it's a bit flat um no more color in the light so right at the end of the uh, the golden hour everything's very intense it's green it was taken in september so late summer um so i want to reduce that a fair amount so let's go for the rgb primaries module if you're coming from lightroom this is roughly now just to the calibration tab and we can use it for some uh, some color grading so let's see we'll drop the red hue because these browns in this kind of bracken uh, heather are a bit strong as well and uh, maybe we'll drop our red purity a little bit and then our greens are where we really need to um, do some work so let's go towards the kind of the blue end of things I think yeah See how that makes the greens look go from kind of summery green to more kind of frosty morning kind of color. Just increase our purity there as well. Yeah. Okay. Blue, I think, is probably fine. We could maybe drop the blue purity a touch. Okay. So we can see how that's just kind of taken the real intensity out of those greens. Okay. Now let's go for uh, color balance RGB and we'll start working on contrast. General vibrance boost, a bit of extra global contrast, and then saturation dropping down as we go from shadows to highlights for a more natural result there. Now let's drop our shadows. We want to really increase the sense of depth. You know, one of the main things we're doing when we're taking landscape photos is trying to restore that depth that we get when we're out there on the on the scene. And then we convert that to a 2D scene and things can look flat unless we work to restore that depth. So we do that through composition and hopefully we've got some depth in this composition with this uh, row of mountains, the Trotinus Ridge, uh, kind of receding into the mist. We've got it with a composition. We just need to do that with the the processing now the light gives us good depth because the sun is still relatively low in the sky we just need to accentuate that with our processing so let's do it i'll add a little bit of a tint to the shadows we've got a lot of green so complementary color to green is purple so we'll add a little bit of purple in the shadows just to take advantage of some color theory and now we'll go to our masks tab so the way that the uh, color balance RGB module applies different adjustments to the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights as it creates luminosity masks for those channels. You may be familiar with luminosity masking with tools like Lumenzia uh, in Photoshop, uh, where you can selectively adjust things based on very fine gradations of uh, luminosity, brightness, if you like. Uh, this is a relatively simple luminosity mask. It's basically got shadows highlights and it works the midtones out from kind of the difference of those so this is at the moment what this tool is considering the shadows and we can increase the uh, angle if you like uh, between what's considered a shadow and what's not the kind of the uh, the smoothness of the fall off between midtones and shadows using this shadows fall off slider so if i just pop the preview off again you can see if i adjust that up and down that we're kind of increasing our shadow contrast without really being too strong about it so i'm going to go for say 250 
So if I just go back to normal and then back to 250, you can see it just gives us a little more depth in those shadows without kind of really crushing them or making them uh, too strong. There's still plenty of detail in those shadows, but we've got a lot of depth. So after we've done our basic adjustments in exposure, we've done our color grading, we can see how much of a difference just, just whoops, we've turned off the wrong thing there, just one module can make. We've gone from a very relatively flat shot there to something with a lot more depth, just with a simple adjustment in one module. Color balance RGB is one of my favorites for that kind of thing. It's so powerful. And what we can probably do is there is some haze here. And as I say, that adds the depth, but we are losing a little, perhaps too much detail for my liking here. So let's do haze removal. There we go. That's pretty good. You can see how that's made a huge difference already to that far mountain and is that, and it's pulling in detail here as well. It's maybe a touch strong though. So let's go 0 0.1, maybe 0 0.15, split the difference. There we go. It's a nice balance between keeping that haziness for the depth and pulling out some detail that's there. Now let's keep on adding some contrast. So let's go for mid-tone contrast first of all. So I've got my first instance of color balance RGB. If I click with a right mouse button here, it will make a new instance. Let's call this mid-tones. And in order to target the mid-tones, we need to use a parametric mask. So we'll click that. And then we'll turn on our mask preview and we will exclude the darkest tones. It's probably a bit strong and then give it a transition between the tones and then we'll exclude our lightest tones and give it a transition so now we're just selecting the mid-tones we'll feather it so that the transition is soft and more natural that's fine we can turn off our preview and now we can add some contrast to the mid-tones so we can drop some shadows bump some highlights Maybe look at just adjusting the midtones a touch. It's quite nice. It's overcooking the highlights there, I think. So let's see the difference this makes. Yeah, just pulls out a little bit of a, something extra. I think we could still maybe drop our shadows a touch. So if I go for a tone equalizer. And the tone equalizer works by splitting the tones in the image up into eight zones. In order to do that effectively, you need to let Darkroom find the, the kind of the tonal range in the image using these uh, magic ones in the masking tab. And then we can just go into our image, hover over any area we want to adjust and roll our mouse wheel. So I want to darken the shadows just here or so. It affects the whole image, but I'm just kind of picking the tone range. So can see the tones by clicking here. So here we are in zone kind of minus seven. And you can see that this zone here is also kind of minus seven. So if I adjust here, it's still going to adjust over here as well. So not too much. Less is always more. And then we can come and fine tune it here if we want to as well. That's good. And now we'll do our normal clarity and texture adjustments. So contrast equalizer. Roll the mouse wheel down until it's nice and big. And drag up our clarity. It's nice. And yes, I do have presets for these. But in the interest of uh, education, I always kind of do it from scratch rather than just use the presets. Uh, so if you if you do this and you're finding you do it regularly, which if you're doing landscape photography processing, you probably do, you can make the adjustment and then click here, store new preset, and then you can just choose it from a menu uh, whenever you want to do it. But as I'm showing you how to do it, I always like to do it from scratch. So I'll make a new instance, and then this time we'll drag up this end and this end. And that's roughly analogous to the texture slider in Lightroom. So between them, really just in kind of different forms of contrast, but they work. So now we'll do a vignette and I use an exposure module for this. There is a native vignetting module, but I prefer the results of exposure. So uh, right click for a new instance. 
grab a drawn mask. So we'll use an ellipse and place it where we want it. By default, this will be applying adjustments inside the oval. So we'll flip it using the reverse polarity. There we go. Now we can drop our exposure. Let's make it slightly bigger. We don't want to darken things too much in the middle. We'll increase the feathering so it's a softer effect. There we go, instant depth. All it's been yet, so it's a control click on any module to rename. And now we'll do some sharpening. So diffuse and sharpen. And for this, I do use presets because it's a very complicated module. Uh, so the first thing I do is a no AA filter demosaicing sharpen. Right click for a new instance and lens deep blur soft. And one more instance of that and local contrast fast. Now that's a little bit strong. So I'm going to go down to my uniform mask and just drop it down to say 60. Let's see what that does. Yeah, it's good. And then there's a final couple of things that I probably should have done at the beginning. I'll do a quick denoise. There's not much noise. It's at base ISO, but it doesn't hurt to take it off and see what lens correction does on a panel like this. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Perfect. And I think one final adjustment I'll do just before we call it a day is maybe just bring these you know, brighter areas down. So we've already got the tone equalizer over here. Um, they're just a little bright. They're not blown out technically, but they're maybe losing a bit of detail in the brightness. So let's just drop, drop it down a touch. Yeah, that's better. We've got a bit more detail there now. Okay, so here's our before and after. Uh, relatively flat, very green, but generally well exposed for, for processing at least. And then we've pulled out a lot of detail, added a lot of contrast, just taken out that real intense green and give it a more slightly interesting color treatment. And uh, on the wall, I think that would look pretty good. Okay, there's our final image, hope you like it. I hope you've uh, learned a few new tricks. I always try and include something slightly different in each video if I can. Um, so, as I say, do like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and found it useful. And I will catch you on the next one.